Go Boom, and welcome to my trap tutorial series. I have a new trap tutorial every week, and I'm really excited because this week's trap is 100% undetectable. So get ready to kill your enemies, trap your friends, and protect your base with this deadly trap for all versions of Minecraft. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. It really helps me out. Hey, this is Ronnie Go Boom, and welcome to Trap Tuesday. You're on my trap tutorial series, and today we're going to go over a proximity detector. That means that we can make a 100% undetectable trap without anyone knowing that there's even something there. In this video, I'll show you exactly what line of sight player detectors are and how they work. Then I'll show you how to build three different designs of them with a step by step tutorial. Next, I'll show you over 18 ways to make them 100% undetectable or close to it, and we'll finish up with some completed traps that I use on factions to kill enemy players. So today we're going to talk about something that I like to call line of sight proximity detectors. These are proximity detectors that use mobs that have a line of sight to the player, and when they do that, they change their behavior in such a way that we can trigger redstone that redstone can trigger a trap. Most of these have been done before. Um, for example, this one over here is a fantastic design by Pi314... <laughs> Let's get his name right. Pi314159265259589. <laughs> <laughs> Three one four one five nine two six five two five eight nine. I always get lost at the end. Oh gosh, <laughs> here he is. <laughs> we came up with this design to allow creepers to climb up on vines when they're in line with sight with a player. How do you know they're in line of sight with a player? All you have to do is hit F3 and B, and you can see their line of sight. If as long as you can see that the center of that red line, it means he's still in contact. So as long as I'm within 16 blocks, and I drew a line 16 blocks this line right here is 16 blocks away from all of these guys these are a little modified design that I made since his wasn't working the way that I wanted it to as long as I can see these guys and as long as I'm over that line they'll start to trigger that tripwire line of sight line of sight just I can't peek around the glass yet but now I should be able to trip that guy excellent um, it works with shulkers, as Alanifer20 showed in his recent video. This is a brilliant design. I love this one. Even though shulkers are a little bit harder to get in the overworld, this is a really great design because it has no false positives. The problem with this one is <laughs> it rarely breaks the minecart. I think he set it up in his so that it doesn't break the minecart, and I'll do the tutorial his way uh, with the double repeaters instead of the single repeater. And I'll also use just one shulker. This is just two for no reason. <laughs> There's no reason to have two. You only need one. Just like with any of these creeper designs, you only need one. One of the best things about these line of sight proximity detectors is that they're highly customizable. Right now that creeper can see me as long as I'm on this block or closer. I can get all the way right up to him. Obviously I don't want to be this close because then I'll trigger his explosion effect. But anywhere within this range is fair game for the trap. Now, I could specify it a little bit more by just blocking off some areas or by backing him up a little bit in our world. If I wanted you to be able to stand here and get blown up, I would have to either use a different kind of proximity detector or I would have to bring him a little bit closer. The cool thing is I can widen his line of sight just by taking blocks out of the way. Now this trap will trigger whether I'm standing here, 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 all the way around. In fact, I could even make it go up high as well. This right here is one of my favorite designs by Pi. It's very reliable, it has very few false positives, it uses a creeper which is really easy to get in the overworld, and it's really easy on resources. Now let's see how to build it. To make it, you're going to need blocks of any type, a torch, three carpets, a vine, some string, two tripwire hooks, a sign, a name tag, and this time we're going to use a painting to cover it up. You're also going to need to get a creeper. We're going to start off by placing a torch right here, with three carpet on top of it. Next, we're gonna put a block right here and we can actually put two blocks up. Now we're gonna count down so that we have a four block fall for the creeper. The creeper won't jump down four blocks unless he sees a target to attack. One, two, three, four. And then we place the floor here and we're gonna start staircasing up 
to wherever the floor is going to be so that he can get as close as possible. You don't have to complete it all the way to your actual floor. In fact, you can leave a gap here, and that's what I'm going to do. Right here, I'm just building the wall that the player will see when they come into the trap. Next, we have a little tunnel. We're going to hide this here with a sign and then a, a painting right in front. Place a vine here, and then finally, we're going to go get our creeper. Creepers are easy to lure in if you have a trapdoor. Just place it like this, find that creeper, and he'll walk right to you as long as he has line of sight. Then we just replace this with a slab so that vines don't grow. Now to hook up our redstone, we just need a block right here and a block on the other side, our tripwire hooks, and a single piece of string. Then just hook up your redstone signal to your trap and you're all set to go. This next design is pretty easy to build as well. It doesn't require vines, but we use water instead. It's very reliable. It still has some false positives, but the more space that you give the creeper behind where he is, <laughs> remember it's a variable range anyway, as long as it's within 16 blocks, the more space you give him behind where he is, the fewer false positives you'll get. And this time I'm going to showcase the dragon head. So let's see what we need to build it. We're going to need some building blocks, a water bucket, two tripwire hooks, string, three signs, a painting, dragon head, we're going to have to go out and find a creeper and then we're going to have to name it. This one we're going to start with a platform that's three long and then we're going to just surround that with blocks. Next we're going to place down our water and a sign, build up the sides so the creeper can't get out, and over here we're going to place our tripwire hook. Place some blocks right on top so the creeper can't get out. And now for the base. This is where you want to build your player trap. And here we're going to place a sign in the back. With a sign on the side of that sign. Painting here. Head here. And if we want to, we can grab a lever, put it on top, or on the side or bottom. <laughs> to get that dragon head chomping. This design was made by Alan for 20 and it's fantastic because it has no false positives like some of the creeper designs. This design is really easy to make. The only downside is the shulker makes a little bit of sound if you're within a, a certain range. But it acts just the same as some of the other designs. To make this, you're going to need a block of any kind, a minecart, a rail, string, two tripwire hooks, two redstone repeaters, three redstone, one block of redstone, and a sticky piston. You're also going to need a name tag and a shulker. The shulker is kind of tough to get in the overworld, but Zasumavoid has a great video on how to make it here. We're going to start off by getting a shulker in the overworld. We're going to name it, and then place some tripwire hooks like this. String in the middle. Then we want to set a minecart on top of the shulker. To do that, we're going to make some blocks over like this, place down a rail, minecart, destroy the block. Next, we're going to place a block here with a piece of redstone, sticky piston facing down, and a redstone block. Next, we're going to go down two blocks, redstone here, two blocks again, two repeaters set to full ticks, a block, and then a piston facing upward. Then just hook up your redstone and you're all set. We're going to line the outside with blocks like this to encase that shulker in there and make sure that his explosive projectiles don't break our minecart. Then you can make your platform. This time let's hide it with some lava. Just place a block down here, a ring up top, and then decorate it any way you like. It looks like a lava trash can, but really it's a trap. This last design is a good one too, but I don't really want to do a tutorial, so I'll just explain how it works. This creeper up here is sitting on the platform. If you stand over here, he'll get attracted to you and try to path to you because these 
carpets right here allow him to pass through. He tries to walk up this little staircase on this, but this is obviously where you put your little hidden mechanism to make it undetectable. He sees you through here. You can customize it by breaking blocks like this and make it a longer, wider field of view. When he falls down, this piston gets retracted. It pushes you back over and a water stream pops you up. Then he swims to the top to get reset back into place. To hook this up, just use a tripwire hook here with a repeater set to one tick, redstone torch, and then a sticky piston. Over here we have a tripwire hook with some string hooked up to a redstone torch, repeater set to three ticks, and a sticky piston pushing up a slime block surrounded by furnaces to bounce that creeper back up into this water column where it swims to the surface to get reset. Then you get a redstone input wherever you like, and you can extend it pretty easily with this comparator circuit. Over here I have a slightly different, more compact design using this creeper. Push him off and let's see. The slime block pushes him over and then the timed piston pushes him up. This one has a different repeater setting. This is a full repeater over here to get him on the slime block instead of a glass block like before. Then over here we have a four repeater set with no redstone torch. So it simply hooks it, drops it, pops him back up. Hook him. Trigger the trap, pop them back up. This one's a little bit more compact. There are so many different ways that you can hide these traps to make them 100% undetectable. One way is to hide the creepers behind lava. You can use paintings or minecarts with chests in them. Sometimes I like to use item frames. You can even use player heads, dragon heads, the like. Signs are fantastic. They're a really easy way to get a person to stand wherever you want them to stand. Because when you get too far away, signs get difficult to read. So you can get a really good approximation of where people like to stand for the triggering of this trap. There are a couple different ways that you can place signs. You can use banners as well. Banners are a great way. Armor stands. Vines are not perfect, but when looking from the side, if you're going to run through a tunnel or something like that, you would never notice a hole like this, especially with vines though. You can use it with a variety of natural looking medium. I like to use these sort of things for more natural builds to put traps out in the wilderness. This right here is another fantastic way to disguise your proximity detector using Red Nomster's discovery that that sand falling on fence posts stays as an entity. I'm in game mode one and I can't destroy these. You can't destroy these in survival either because they're still entities. And they're still there when you log out and log back in. The cool thing is though, this is not actually a full block so creepers can see right through. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure you check out my quicksand trap. It's awesome. Creepers can also see through entities like cows so you can disguise it as a cow farm <laughs> when really your cow farm is a trap. Let's take a look at some traps. This one is fantastic. It's very difficult to notice. Red Nomster discovered this, that if you place sand on top of a fence post, it turns into an entity. This is great because it duels as a falling trap. But the neat thing is a creeper can see through it. I should use my other design because this one keeps getting a bunch of false positives, but that's okay. When you trip this one, the creeper comes towards you and trips that trip wire. He opens up this floor beneath you with a 3x3 flush piston floor. Mumbo has a fantastic tutorial here. And hoppers at the bottom collect your loot. It's relatively easy to hook up. Here's the creeper up here. Here's the input from that trip wire. Comes down here to a pulse extender and then hooks up directly to the 3x3 flush piston floor retractor. This one's one of my favorites because you can hook it up to pretty much any room in your world or your faction uses a lot of redstone, but it's totally worth it because it covers such a large area. Inside a normal looking faction room, we actually trapped one of the walls here. Right now I'm using one of the, the, creep, the easy to build creeper ones that has a few false positives. So what you could actually do is hook up one here and another one here and then hook up an AND gate between them so that if one gets a false positive, it doesn't actually trip the trap. You have to actually be here to trip both of them to pull it away. But this is really cool. It's actually a double floor retractor and a double piston extender in the wall. So if you're standing here or here, <laughs> you fall right down. As long as you're in this area in general, as soon as that creeper sees you, he's going to drop you down underneath the floor. 
The neat thing with this design is it can push you in up to a six wide hallway. I have a tutorial here on my infinite fall trap video. It takes a lot of redstone, but it's totally worth it. Double piston extender, double floor retractor, infinitely wide, and this is four blocks of pushing power <laughs> to get you to fall onto a neat platform. Really simple to make, just takes a bunch of rails. This is a great alternative for servers that make you buy hoppers for exorbitant amounts of money. Rails are pretty cheap, so you just use a few hoppers to absorb all those items and you can cover a much larger area. And they still die when they fall on it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, it helps me out so much. I hope you learned something from this episode. If you end up making this trap yourself, please take some screenshots. I wanna see the loot that you get. I wanna see the trap when it's finished. I can't wait to get some community feedback on this because I know that these are really useful traps. Thank you so much to all the people who made traps before I made these designs or people who invented designs that I used in this video. You guys are awesome. All the links to those videos and links to other videos that I talked about in this video are in the description below. Make sure you check those out if you haven't seen them already. Subscribe to my channel. I'll come out with a new video every Tuesday for Trap Tuesday. And I'm really excited to tell you that Factions is going to be starting up again. Lee and I already shot one of our first episodes, or at least part of it. I'm going to be making a new base. Oh, this is going to be such an awesome season on Boomcraft. Until then, make sure you check out this trap. It has absolutely no redstone. And then watch this video. It's my ghost block video. It has so many awesome traps that use ghost blocks completely undetectable in 1.8. Or you can check out this super simple trap for 1.9 that only takes four materials to make. Or find out how you can make your base completely unraidable by chorus fruit.